This is episode 109 of the Steady Trade Podcast with your hosts, Tim Bowen. What do you mean? Why is it significant? Why does it matter? And Steven Johnson. I just want to pack you off, put you in a box and send you to Asia. <laughs> Today, the guys go back to the basics to teach you some specific lessons about this foreign language of chart reading. Reading stock charts really is like learning a language. It takes three or four years. But if you're not really that advanced, you need to take lessons. And what this is, is kind of a small lesson in chart reading ability with a whole dollar, half dollars, like really, really, really nailed into them as well. So that's what you're in for today. Enjoy. Hey everyone, Tim Bowen here. Would like to thank you for listening to the Steady Trade Podcast. Really enjoy bringing it to you every week. And I've also got something great to bring to you today. We've recently partnered with Tradier, a great discount brokerage. And for $14.99 a month, you get unlimited trade commissions. No matter how many trades you make, it's $14.99 a month. And the other great thing is you can open an account with only $500. The best part about this is as you're trying to learn and grow that account, you want to minimize your costs as much as possible. So with Tradier, you can put that money back in your account instead of giving it to your broker. And that's how you grow over time. So check it out and sign up with Tradier today. As mentioned in the introduction, we're going to break down something that is a, you know, it's a common request. We've actually gotten asked about this a fair amount because of the fact, and, and I appreciate the listeners paying attention, Stephen and I talk about this topic a lot. We mentioned this whole idea of key levels and particularly whole dollar, half dollars. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not saying we've gotten hundreds of requests, but we've gotten a fair amount of requests. It, like, Go in depth. You guys talk about this for, you know, out of tons of episodes, but what do you mean? Why is it significant? Why does it matter? And, you know, I think it's a simple concept, but I think it is something that is very, very true and does deserve a little bit of breaking down. And, and uh, you know, I, I always hate to, one of the, one of the most trendy, uh, annoying words in 2018, 2019 is literally and a close second is unpacking. If you listen to any type of news or podcast, everybody wants to unpack stuff these days. But I think we will unpack the whole dollar, half dollar. Stephen, what do you think? What's, what's your input on this? I think I just want to pack you up, put you in a box, and send you to Asia. <laughs> so I don't see I it. I would again. appreciate that. <laughs> will, there be, wanna... will, there, will there be like breathing holes in this <laughs> box, or will I be asphyxiated? Uh... Um, no, no, you're, you're, in the cargo you're, hold? I don't, don't, don't want to kill you. I don't want to kill you. I just well, want to send you as, as far away as possible. <laughs> but you can um, send me a ticket. I'm not afraid to travel. So you don't have to put me in a box. You can just send me a ticket. No, not afraid to travel. Just afraid to wear flip flops when you travel. That, that's pretty much where it goes. It right. Doubly <laughs> so. If I'm telling you, I mean, this is an old school steady trade reference. But if I'm in a you know, some quote unquote sketchy country. That's the last place I'm going to wear flip flops. I'm going to have some sort of steel toe boot laced up tight and ready to go if I need to go. So no, but uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm glad to have a lesson plan. It's not really a lesson plan, but I've got some charts referenced and, and some of the analysis is really telling in it. And uh, I will say that uh, reading stock ch charts really is like learning a language. It takes three or four years, but if you don't, if you're not really that advanced, you need, to take lessons and what this is is kind of a small lesson in chart reading ability with a whole dollar half dollars like really 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 nailed into them as well um, and i think you're so you know I, I think I, I love that that analogy you made because again I, I think that you know i look at whole dollar half dollars every day so you can call it beginner or advanced i think it's part of the language and i like your analogy you know you're like if you're going to learn charts it takes time you know, and you don't, you start out with saying, you know, where is the coffee shop? Okay. You're not discussing advanced topics when you're learning a language. You're going to learn, or, you know, where is a bathroom or something like that. You're going to start out with the most simplest terms and then, ex, you know, expand from there. And that's why I, I think you're, that was a great analogy when it comes to breaking down charts. No, no. I mean, I've been doing some great things because I've been, uh, I've been sober for three days. So I've been, I've been doing some really, really great things recently in the, in the state of sobriety. Kim, Kim and Kitten told us to go to Alcoholics Anonymous <laughs> and, I was, and do six months sober. I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm on day three and I'm like, nah, I think, I think I'll probably have a drink tomorrow. 
Which, as, that, as a reference, just, just to anyone that, um, <laughs> just before we get started, uh, you know, because I know sometimes you might, the listeners might catch these out of sequence, but um, again, I, today, today, favorite episode of Steady Trade with Kim Ann Curtin, the Wall Street coach. And then as of, we're recording this on Tuesday, as of yesterday, the session with Steven and Kim dropped and I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, but I've seen a lot of comments on social. A lot of people are really liking that episode. Yeah. So yeah. It was, definitely it was, check those two out. So. And I mean, I've got to, I've got to credit Kim. I mean, sometimes I, I try and avoid conversations cause she gets us to do things I don't want to do like, like drinking, <laughs> but in general, I mean, I, we'll go into the topic, but uh, yeah, I mean, since that first call, I don't know what's happened. I mean, I've been working more. I've had a bit more discipline anyway. And obviously I can't trade drunk because I'm at work. So like I have to trade sober because uh, there's no time. Like, I mean, I'm not going to go to the bar at lunchtime. Not, not every day anyway. Um, <laughs> so like I have to trade sober, right? So since I've been trading sober and since I've been working more hours, I mean, uh, that's $580 count, maybe 600 maximum. It's up to 2,100. I'm hitting, I'm, I'm hitting turning that, that's a, so, so, turn that uh, account over four times. Yeah, that's, that's impressive. You know, and, and, and Stephen said that kind of quickly. If you didn't hear that, you know, if, if um, now, remember, you always got to contain losses. But if you didn't hear that, Stephen's turned a $500 account into like 2200 in a few weeks, not trading that much. How many trades have you made? Five? Uh, nah, like, well, honestly, like it's, I, I, I never trade the afternoon. I, I will if there's like a VWAP hold set up, definitely. But uh, if, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm ever unsure, generally I don't trade the VWAP rejects and I, and I don't otherwise trade because I've got such a bad record. So I'm just looking for the right setup in the morning. And, um, and if it's there, I'll take it. And if it's not, I'll not. And that leads to about three, three or four trades a week. Three, probably three trades a week. Probably made about six, seven trades. Made, made three or four hundred on the bigger ones. Made a hundred on a lot of the littler ones. I had a lot of $100 days, a lot of $80, $120 days. And I've had, and, but, but th- this is the key, right? I'm, I'm not trading to make money. I'm not trading to build, I'm trading to build an account, but that's not the main aim. The main aim of my trading now is to practice cutting losses. Perfect. That's that's the reason I'm trading. I'm not trading to get the home runs. I'm not trading. I'm not trading for the big gains. I'm not doubling or tripling the. It's just happening because I'm trading. To, I'm just practicing cutting losses. That's the whole game of the trading right now. Yeah, and I mean, and and that's you know something we talk about a lot on this podcast, and we we really talked about it. Another, I'm going to drop another episode with with uh, Sean Deckmar a couple of weeks ago where we talked about that. I mean, he spent like two years, you know, paper trading, testing, etc. You know. If here's the thing, Stephen has quadrupled or whatever six times, yeah, quadrupled. hex, hex, uh, tuple, whatever it is, <laughs> quintuple, whatever. Um, a small account, but you know he's not trying to get rich. I mean, if you start out with a five hundred dollar account and you think you're going to quote unquote get rich, good luck. Your priorities are screwed from the beginning. I love what you're doing because you're like, listen. I'm going to practice cutting losses and what happens, what happens. And all of a sudden look at where you are. It's wild. Get your mind right. Thanks to Kim, maybe how things fall in line. No, Kim helped a lot because I never had the analytical process before I was taking a trade. Oh, I I didn't have the right mentality. I was just gambling. Um, But a lot of the time I'm thinking, what's your primary, primary objective? It's, it's to cut the losses and practice it. So you're like, well, is it a good, is it a good idea to take this pre-market where you're going to have to take the, cut the loss? It's just having common sense a bit as well. It's like, it's like, look, do I want to take this? Take, there's a trade pre-market. Do I want to take it? Well, normally when I take trades really early pre-market, I go for a wild ride. More often than not, I'll go for a ride than I do uh, make money. So let's just see how it falls out at the auto and I'm at work anyway. And then uh, I'll see where it is at 9.30, 9.45, 9.50. 9:50. Said it a million times, failed a million times. For some reason, now I can do it. I, Maybe it's Kim, maybe it's work, maybe it's just three years of failing and I'm sick of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, and I mean, it might be, I mean, who knows? It might be all might of be the above. Thing. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, and, and that's why, you know, that's why, again, I appreciate you sharing this journey, you know, along with the podcast. I mean, it's just, and, and I know we've said it a million times, a million different ways, but it's just like everybody's journey is different and it's just not linear. It is not. And, and if you think you're going to be successful a few months or six months in, maybe, 
but probably not. And you're going to have, you know, if you stick to it, you stay diligent, you might blow up three accounts, five accounts, but if you stay with it, you can start doing what Steven's doing. But, and look at the DJ Denny, DJ Denny, study trade, paper trading podcast uh, winner. He, he reminds me of me like a year ago. Um, he, he's had success in the paper trading, but he's going on those wild rides. He, he's making money, but he hasn't, uh, you can tell by the way he speaks and maybe he's fixed this already. I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, but going on those wild rides is, is, a, is a sign of someone who's nearly got it, but not quite got it. And there's, there's still a leap there. There's still a leap. You've got to, got to, got to not go on the wild rides, like not even come close to going on the wild rides. Right. <laughs> right? You, 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 it's not like you nearly went on the wild ride. You've got to knock on, you've not even get on, you've not even got a queue for the rides. You know what I mean? You've not got to even go on the theme park. <laughs> you, you've got to be like, you've got to be anticipating something happening and, and cut it the second that it, it does what you think it's going to do. Or even before that. Um, well, I tell you what, let's, uh, let, let's jump into today's topic. Um, yeah. I'll blow up next one, week. Yeah? I'll number blow one, up I want to right, say nice work. And number two, keep doing what you're doing. Okay. Uh, to just you know, don't blow up. Just don't well, blow up after saying this all again. <laughs> but, but, you know, maybe you re-listen to this podcast. But everything you said, I love, on point, well done. Let's just keep doing it, baby. Let's just keep it up. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I'm gonna. I'm up. I'm up to a couple of thousand. I think I'm just gonna withdraw a thousand and go back to that smaller size and just do it again. Just I don't want to get too far ahead too soon, but um, but at the same time, it's fun. But anyway, whole dollar, half dollar. Um, it is is a prerequisite to this episode. It's so fascinating when you see it, how these levels are like walls, and once you break a key level, say like say you break ninety five. The, the, you will go to the dollar. And once you get to the dollar, you'll go to 105. So that's why these whole dollar, half dollars are really important because once you start recognizing them and seeing them in the charts that we'll put out here, you start not getting freaked out by the little moves in today, by the little sparks. And you start thinking, I'm going to buy off these bottoms and I'm going to sell at these tops. And, and you start seeing what other people, the other 95% who lose don't see. And, and that's what's fascinating. But I'll, I'll just uh, take your face off the screen. Yeah, so you see NVCN, um, if you just look at these levels, especially when the stocks are going kind of supernova, you can see this kind of initial breakthrough. It's not quite at the whole, it's not quite at a whole number, but it's kind of peaking here at the 89.7 level, just, just, just under the whole dollar of 90. So the first point is it, it doesn't necessarily always close exactly on 90. But you're going you're gonna to get it when it's on its way up. It's going to maybe test 90 and reject and fail and come back down. Uh, on the way back down from the supernova here, you see that it's, it's kind of it's opening up at that 90 level. It's testing it, kind of go above, kind of go below. If it goes below like it didn't crash here on this next day, you can see that it's going to come all the way down. If it might hold that 90 level, there's, there's another chance that it can push up. Um, but what's interesting is on this first uh, supernova day, when it really starts to break out, uh, we get the 90 rejection, but then we see the full push uh, all the way up to 110. Then, then it retests the whole dollar. So this is interesting, just live analysis. On its way down, I mean, on its way up, it, it, you're thinking, can it break 105? Can it break 110? And then on the way down, you're thinking, can it hold a dollar? No. And then it goes back down to 90. Can it hold 90? No. And then it goes all the way down to eight, like around the 77s. So I just thought it was fascinating how you have these these kind of on, on its way up, it's testing 90 on this week. And then on, on this day, it's opening up at a dollar and it's like, can it hold the dollar? Then here it, it can't push the dollar 10. So it comes back down the same way it came up. And, and you know, the interesting, you know, and you will see this, this goes to the listener. Oh, and by the way, if you're listening on iTunes, remember, always jump over to YouTube and you can bring up these charts. But we're looking at NVCN, um, a six-month, one-day chart, and today's July 2nd. But anyway, um, yeah, it, it, the biggest thing that strikes to me is how many times you will see this repeat. Look at that volume candle on the day it breaks a dollar. That Volume candle is the biggest thing I pick out That's from this chart. Right? Is it just it just shows you that people are keying on that level, and you know a lot of this just boils down to you know why do why do 
people price stuff at 99 cents and not a dollar? Why do they price a used car at 99.99 and not 10,000? Those are key levels. The, the human brain looks at that. That's why we talk about this 50 cent and this $1. So as NBCN is uptrending, 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 everybody is waiting for that $1 break. They're like, can it break a dollar? Can it break a dollar? When it does, everybody flows in. You see it spikes. I mean, it spikes to 110. So, and you get that big volume candle that day, biggest volume of the day when it, when it finally breaks $1. Then on the flip side, same thing. Once it cracks below dollar, a gap's down, it just gets destroyed for four days straight. I mean, it's just over with. And then it has a little bit of a weak bounce, but then fades back into oblivion. It's a good example. The volume is the biggest tell for me. So Yeah, but, but, but I also do like the fact that, I mean, it's, it's, it's had its run. And, and it is like, can it, can it kind of hold the $1, kind of get above the, the $1, and when it fails the one dollar, it's just straight back down to where it yeah. came from. Because like now, if- now you know again. Now the idea is, you had all the whole dollar buyers waiting. They all bought, bought, bought because they're like, "Here comes a dollar for three or four days." They're like, "Here comes a dollar." Then when it fails, smart traders, and I'm not saying it's a bad trade; it's a good trade to buy these breaks. But the smart guys are like, "It's a junk stock. Get me out. It's a it's a failed breakout. It's a failed whole dollar, half dollar break. Get me out." No, absolutely. And, and there's, and like you'd expect intraday. I mean, I don't know this for sure. I don't know how the trade is, but like, if you see the stock, if this was the intraday, it pops up, rejects, you've got to bounce to bounce that lower, then lower highs. The minute this goes, it's, oh, it's yeah. a way down. <laughs> but, um, the, the next stock that we look at, it's a, it's a similar pattern. Let me just bring this one. Uh, and then I'm just bringing up tops here and tops is another example. Um, what is particularly I thought interesting here is it's it's the same kind of thing. It's it's uh, like quarter dollars, a uh, three quarter dollars, uh, full dollars, a dollar. Let me, and a quarter. let me just give a give a little yeah, bit of please, little please. bit of input there. So um and 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 Stephen makes a great point. I just want to for the listener. So we say whole dollar, half dollar because it's an abbreviation, but particularly on these lower price stocks the quarter increments come in, in as well. So I think Stephen's going to talk about 75, 125, et cetera. It's just way quicker than saying whole dollar, half dollar, quarter dollars, et cetera. So, so um, he, I think he's going to talk about 75, 125 in low price stocks. When you're talking 25 cent, $1 stock, $2 stocks, the quarter increments are, are key levels as well. But I mean, also what's, what's, I mean, I'm just noticing this now when I look at it, like you do read another language uh, that, I mean, it's not, you're looking at the wicks here. Well, one second, let's just annotate this. I'll annotate it uh, this way. You, you, you might, you're not just looking at um, the wicks. You're also looking at the kind of where it closes and opens, where the whole body closes and opens. And it's not always dead accurate, but you've kind of got to find the line where most of the lines kind of add up. And you can see this at a dollar, and I'm just picking this up, and the drone's, up, the drone's not going to be perfect. But you can even see on a dollar, you can, and then all the way across here as well. Mm-hmm. Um, if I just put this down on the around the dollar range, you can see that it's kind of bottomed. It's it's closed here, then it's bottomed here, then it's kind of closed around a dollar, then it's it fell through the dollar here, and then it's popped back up, and then it's just when it, and then it's broke through the dollar here, and we get this trickle down to the seventy fives. So you can see how it's it's hovering around key support levels and and hold and hold dollars. Uh, and then when it actually does come down, it's got kind of constant support, 75, bottomed at 75 over here. It's bottomed at 75 again over here. And this is, I see, so you see sometimes like the likes of Roland Wolf, what he used to do back in the day, he'd look for these key lines. It's a whole dollar number. It's bottomed a few times before. And you can see it bounces and it pops back up, bounces, pops back up. And then if you're buying off this bottom line, you've always got your 75 as a risk. If it breaks, you're out. But then if it does break, then you've got the option of going short and it's, it's dropping all the way down to the 60. Uh, it, on the flip side, when it's, when it's rocketing, when you're getting this like supernova, you're thinking, well, where's the key level? Does it break a dollar? Yes. Does it break 110? Yes. 120? Yes. And then you've got the main key level of 125, which is the rejection. You know, and, and that 75 level is the biggest thing I pick up on this. I mean, remember, this is a, this is a six-month, one-day chart. I mean, look at, 
for three months, this stock bounced off 75. That is showing you that these levels become support and resistance. And remember, when, when support breaks, that level tends, up, tends to become resistance. So when it breaks on, on Steven's fail annotation there, it's kind of <laughs> wild. Notice how the stock drops hard, tries to recover, but then basically where his green line is, it touches 75 and fails again. That, that shows you that, that support becomes resistance, resistance becomes support, you know, if, if you're going long, if it breaks. But uh, it's pretty wild to see that big crack, five or six red days, tries to bounce on pretty good volume, and then fails on 75 and slams. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, just for people to know, you're not really shortening like this weakness here. You're not really shortening it at, at, this, at, the, at the level because that's where Roland's buying and it's popping up and the shorts are getting trapped. You've really got to kind of let this fail and then short when it pops back up and risk off that 75. But the other, the, I'm just noticing this now, the other thing that you've got to consider is don't just look at the ascending triangles and the descending triangles on the intraday charts because you've actually got, I mean, if you pull this all the way across here on the 75 line, and then we, we look from like $1.10, you can probably, you can make a good case for a descending triangle. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, and, it's, and then you've got, you've got it peaked here. You can short these peaks. Peaked here, rejected this descending triangle, descending triangle, rejected the descending well, and, and, triangle. A couple of those, that, that one you annotated was a spike into a dollar. I mean, it's that, that right in the middle of the chart, it tries yeah, to yeah. bounce. It has two green days, basically spikes to a dollar. Remember, we're also rounding here. So I know, you know it probably hit like 95. It's quote unquote close enough. But it spikes to a dollar, fails, and then has two, four, six, like eight red days in a row. I mean, that, I mean, especially shorting against that whole dollar, half dollar. Yeah, shorting against the whole dollar, half dollar, and shorting against the triangle, and shorting on the fact that it's up a couple of days. I mean, that's when you've really built your case. And it's, you know, um, it's the tops is, if, if you're not familiar with tops, tops it's, it's a piece of shit as well. <laughs> yes, it's one of the worst, you know, it's, it's one of the shipping stocks, you know, it's like dries. It's one of the worst stocks in the universe. So, yeah, and I mean, and then this is a, a bit of a, a, a less clear observation, but you've got the big push here. And as the volume drops on these days, you can just see everyone's lost interest and it's slowly bleeding as more and people slowly let go of the bag. <laughs> We've bag hold it on the way back down. And, um, you know, and there's a, there's a, and, and there's a tip that I wanted to point out. Okay. Listen, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody's a bag holder at some point, you know, the idea is, we all hold losing positions longer than we should, but you get better at it over time and you realize, hey, I'm a bag holder and you get out sooner, okay? You're gonna make mistakes. The goal is to minimize the mistakes. But here's the thing. If you're in something like Tops, say you bought, you bought it at 80 cents or something and it's just fading, fading, fading and you get that weak bounce. So we're looking at again, that, that point when it spikes into 75. If it spikes and fails, that is where you, whatever it is, you take that 10% or whatever it is and unload that bag because you finally got a weak bounce. It didn't break that key level. If you don't take at least that, I mean, you're, you're, you're condemning yourself to purgatory basically. So if you're in those bag holding situations and you get those weak bounces, at least take it and, and get the hell out and move on. No, and I mean, and I just, I also just want to add, I mean, it's the, the, the really, the, the beautiful and fascinating thing about looking at these charts is it's so simple. It's so simple at, at face value. It's so simple on the surface. You've got sure. some volume bars and you've got some candles on the day that say it went up or it went down. But the amount of analysis that you can make and the learnings that you can make over time to re-read and re-read and read in deeper and, and more depth in terms of levels of knowledge, it can extend into like the tens and 20 years of, of knowledge of how you just read these simple things. I, you know, you've heard me, one of my favorite sayings is, you know, look at charts till your eyes bleed. I mean, it's like, it is, you know, just like a lane. You know, I, I, I love your language analogy because it's like, I mean, you could buy a book on you know Spanish, but it's it's it takes time. I mean, you just, and you got to repeat these words over and over and over again, and and it's a it's a and you, you got to look at stuff every single day. 
No, and I mean, and I, I mean, I would not advocate this as, as a parental method, but I'll do it because I'm a little bit crazy and, un, and unorthodox. But I'm going to have a kid, and when he's six, I'm going to start making him watch charts, and I'm going to start teaching him it. Because if he learns to write English and learn another language, like he learns to read these charts, he's going to be a multi-million billionaire. And I mean, I don't know if, if, if have you done it, Tim, with your son? Have you, you know, got him involved or is he just no, like, get lost that? <laughs> no, you know, I, I, uh, you know, he's got a lot of interests and, um, he's, n- he's never really showed interest. He's, he's got a lot of interests in, you know, obviously I think a lot of you guys know hunting and fishing. I mean, he may be a professional fisherman, but, uh, he's never really shown an interest in it. Now, if he came to me, I would go whole, whole hog, but I mean, he's busy as heck. It's summer. He's actually working 60 hours on a fiber optic crew right now because he wants to work. So if he came to me and asked, I would do it, but he's never asked. So I, I haven't taken that, that approach. And no, one no. note, one note. Are you familiar Fun. with Pete Marinovich? Nah, nah. All right. Well, if you're going to try and turn your son into a stock trading robot, Google Pete Marinovich and his son, and you, you, you might be cautious trying to turn him into it. People are in and start turning his Todd into a quarterback robot. And at last I knew, I think the kid is like on meth or something. So no offense, I mean, Todd, if you're not on meth. But. I mean, I'm not going to Google that story because I'm just going to learn through my own experiences. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you know, why learn from someone else's experiences ruining the life of their kid when you can just repeat the cycle? You know, hey. I mean, I'm just going to ignore that. And if my kid doesn't want to learn to trade stocks, I'm just going to like whack him in the face and put him in a dungeon and be, until he agrees to do it. But I mean, that's a side note and that's my personal parental advice and, and, and tendency towards parenting. I might write a book on it one day, but until then, uh, <laughs> the last chart, which is the most interesting is a higher price stock just because I thought it'd be uh, quite interesting to look at the fact that whole dollar, half dollars, it might be the 0.25s, the 0.5s, the 10s, the 20s, the, the 0.10, the 0.20, the 0.30 level. When it gets a bit higher, it goes into like the $5 and the $10 levels, right? See, oh, uh, and, and man, I think, you know, one of the reasons I like higher price stocks is I think this whole dollar, half dollar stuff is extra true in higher price stocks. And I, I'm trying to find it the other day, but actually I have a request to the listeners. I got homework for you. If you could... Uh, I tried Googling this, Googling this the other day, but I swear, unless I hallucinated or dreamt it, like five or six years ago, I read a study that they studied every stock that reached $100 a share, and like a significant majority of them would continue higher after reaching 100 I spent a few minutes Googling. I couldn't find it. You know, ADD, butterfly, a squirrel, I got distracted. But if anybody could find that study, please drop it in the comments because I would love to have it as a resource. But it was something about stocks reaching $100 tend to continue higher, blah, blah, blah. So, Don, and, and while we're talking about resources, I would like to have your resource in, in terms of your mindful of knowledge of stock trading to, to, to question my perception of this stock chart? Listen, I'm not, I'm no psychologist, but I know that these HFTs, these black boxes, I mean, they have psychologists. Look at like Renaissance Capital. Look at Billions. Remember Billions? I only watched a few episodes, but they had that psychologist in the office. We've talked about Kim Ann Curtin. They know that humans are going to key on these levels. And that's why you see this. And I think it's a great example with Apple. It's like every $10, it spikes. Then that 10, that, that, area becomes support. 175 is resistance on the left, then it holds. 185 holds after that dip to 195. It then grinds all the way up to 200. 200 holds for a few months. Then when 200 breaks, it gets ugly really fast. Look at that. When 200 breaks, two day down days, and then yeah, a big yeah. gap down. Now that gap down was probably news. I would guess no, it was um, earnings uh, or something. Market, no, the market was falling apart at the time. Oh, so okay, okay, all right. Well, uh, fair enough. No, but. Uh, no, the SPY it was starting to. Um, the SPY was starting. Everyone was going, "Oh, the market's going to crash. The market's going to crash." And then it held that key level a few times and it came back up. I think Apple. But then got it even, it even reminds me of tops. Look at after that big gap down, it it tries to grind higher, hits that one ninety area, and then falls apart for two weeks again. So it's this is not. You know, it's one of those things where you can't just like 
oversimplify it and trade all of these levels, but it is a keep it simple, stupid type scenario where it's like, you will see this repeat over and over again, particularly on the daily chart. And it's no surprise to me that Apple looks like this. No, but I mean, it's, it's, um, I remember trading this and it's, in hindsight, it is obviously easy and you shouldn't hindsight trade. But, it is easier, but, for sure. But like when you get Apple at a 200 level, you think, look, when it opens on this day, think, okay, wait, did it reject 200? Yes. Wait for it to make a lower high, uh, short the lower high risking off the 200 level. And then you've got, you've got a profitable day. Well, not on, on this red day, you've got a profitable day. On this red day, you've got a profitable day. On this red day, you've got a profitable day. On this day, you might cut your loss. And then obviously on, the, on this day when it breaks through, then you're kind of looking at it the other way because you're thinking, okay, it's probably going to ride up from 200 to 210. Like it's gone $10 a share on here and here and, and here. So. And something I want to point out before we wrap this up, remember what I like about Apple as a $200 stock. Remember the rule of 10. So I'm telling you, if, if you find a $1.75 stock, you know, that's when I talk about the rule of 10, or this would actually be the rule of 100. But you would, I'm telling you, you see a 175 stock in play with news, whatever, hot sector, you'll see this repeat at 175, 185, 2, 225, over and over and over again. So even though you might not trade a $200 stock, this chart will come in play if you just move that decimal point. Yeah, and guess what else? It's like Christmas because you can short for days with borrowers. You can short for days yeah. because trust me, there's enough people with Apple. There's enough investors of Apple who want to give you their shares to bet, to bet against them because yep. it's you such get, a good company. You get a, you get a $200 fail on Apple. <laughs> I mean, look, look at what it does. You get, you get a 20% gap down in two or three days. You know? And the nice thing about Apple, if you're short bias, number one, it's extremely unlikely you're going to get bought in, okay? Very unlikely, like you will in low price stocks. And number two, you won't pay freaking 7X overnight borrow fees in something like Apple, like you will in low price stocks. So you can hold these for days and not pay ridiculous fees or get forced out. No, and honestly, and I'll just, I'll just, we'll just close on that. I mean, I've, uh, yeah, the, the account's growing from 600 to, to 2100 or something like that. 2200 but uh, I, I promise you, without those borrow fees, it would have been about 2700 2800 Wow, no kidding, really. <laughs> uh, I've, been, I've been paying 40 and, like $40, $50 before I've even traded. I'm paying $50 on borrow fees. So, you, so, you, so if you're going to short these junk stocks, make sure you absolutely know what you're doing to utilize that borrow fee. You know the remember that, and thank you, and that's a great point, Stephen, because remember, that cuts both ways. You're paying that fee whether you win or lose, okay? So now if you lose on this trade, you got to lump that fee on top. So it's like, it, it, it definitely cuts both ways. Now you've got to be so, so, so careful. I mean, you've got to think like, if I'm paying $50 for a borrow fee, I want this to be up 80% and I want to see a lower high and I want to see it's failed the last nine times it's gapped this high and the volume's no, no different to any of the other nine times. In fact, well, it should be less. It should be less. Uh, so before so we get on that tangent again, so <laughs> yeah. a good, good episode today, Stephen, and I appreciate Thank the you, preparation, getting ready. And that's impressive, man. Great job with your account. Keep that nah, shit up. Nah, man. It's, it's really good because I was, I was so- cut, I'm going to so, start cutting so your different. fingers off. Man, I was so, uh, I was so dis, dis, not disengaged, but like so demotivated from constant failure. Uh, but I, t I like I took a break out and uh, and then yeah, just it really come together and sometimes a break can work for you and it's it's I've never been more passionate and interested again. You know what I mean? Perfect, awesome. Hi, this is Sonia May from Albany, Georgia, and I like to travel the world while listening to Stephen and Tim on the Steady Trade podcast. You can register to win real actual prizes at their website, SteadyTrade.com. If you really like what you hear, give the podcast a five-star rating and write a glowing review on iTunes. I did. And this is how we say goodbye in Orlando. Goodbye. Bye.